Recording in progress. All right. Welcome to the Love Thy Neighbor Podcast Network. I'm your host, Anthony Wilson. And today on Love Thy Neighbor, I got a good friend, uh, a brother in Christ, a man who loves God with a passion. And I can't wait to dive into this discussion with my man, Roland Graham, uh, the soldier for Christ. Well, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm blessed, man. I am blessed. I, it is an honor to be featured on the podcast. Hey, man, I'm glad to have you. He's one of my sponsors. He's one of my guys, man. Uh, uh, when he was going through the ordination class, this is the guy who, hey, let me ask that question. Let me get, you know, and so just full of questions because he wants to know so he could take it to the streets and, and, and minister to people. He wants to know. And so, man, how are you? How's the fam? What's going on with you right now? <laughs> oh, man, we we just so blessed. Just like you mentioned, uh, I just got ordained as an evangelist. Yes. <laughs> uh, man, I was just very excited about it. Uh, my wife, she got ordained as well. Uh, and being in your class, I definitely learned a lot. Amen. Amen. And, and I hope I wasn't too hard on No, me. no, no, no. I love it, man. I love it. That's me. I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so family, wife, how long you been married? Got any kids? What's going on with <laughs> yep. So, so uh, me and my wife, we've been married for four years. Latrice Graham, what's up, Latrice? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've been married for four years, and uh, I have two kids uh, by my ex-wife, and then she had five kids prior to me. Man, y'all got the Brady so, bunch. <laughs> oh man, and and now we got grandkids and <laughs> running around. So, so it's it's one big happy family. Hey man, that's good, man. That's good. That's that's so good. Now I heard about a music project that you're working on. Talk to me about the music. Uh, what's going on with that? Yes, yes. So um, uh, back in 2012, uh, I started uh, my own label called Black Sheep Entertainment. Okay, okay. And uh, and, and one of the reasons I called it Black Sheep is because you know. Part of my mission and calling, uh, God is sending me out to those who who feel like they're black sheep, the outcasts of the world, those that the the world kind of reject. Those are the folks God is sending me to. So I decided to start my own own ministry, uh, which is called Black Sheep Entertainment. And under that ministry, we dropped about four or five albums. Amen. Amen. uh, I recently just dropped a new single called Hood evangelist. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. So I'm very excited about uh, pushing this single and getting that out there because uh, just being ordained as a uh, a minister, I kind of want to let the world know where I'm at, where I stand, and and, and what, what my calling is. Amen. You know, and, and what what I love about it is that. You know, everybody wants to be an apostle, prophet. Everybody wants to be a pastor, teacher. You don't hear a lot of people actually wanting to be an evangelist that they call. They feel that call to evangelism. You know, um, what really helped you to understand that this is who you were, an evangelist? Well, I always had a love for uh, people. And it, and it started with that. Just just my love for people. Uh, uh I've been through so much in my life and, you know, growing up, going through trials and tribulations, uh, growing up in the urban community, growing up in the projects, the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you learn to deal with trials and tribulations, but you know, you still have those questions to God, like, like what, why are you having me go through all of these trials and tribulations? And then he kind of revealed to me because the people he's going to send my way, (laughs) It's going to be the same people yeah. that is going through what I went through and, and what he delivered me from. Yes, yes. So so now I kind of understand why I've been through so much in my life and, and certain environments I have to deal with because now those same type of people is coming my way. And it gives me the opportunity to uh, be in a better position to minister to them because I walked in their shoes. Yeah. It's easy, it's easy for someone to go to a pastor and, and, and the pastor gives them a word, but the pastor never been through what they've been through. Right. 
Right. And I and I and I think I think they relate to me a little bit more because I I've been through it. So it's just that 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 passion I have to to, to help people and let them know. Look, I've been through what you've been through. God got me out. That's what He could do for you. Yeah, and and that is so beautiful because you know you're wondering who's gonna go get these people. Who's going to go out there and get that 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 brother, you know, you know, uh, people talk about the shortage of black men in the church. And well, it's because who's going out there, who's going out there and meeting them right where they're at and talking to them right where they're at. You know, Paul says to that he had to be all things to all men that he might win some, you know, and he knows he he knew he wasn't going to win everybody. But he still was willing to go out to everybody and at least try. There's a lot of people that feel safe. You know, in in their sanitized, nice, neat oh, yeah. churches, and don't want to get yeah. out there, right? And well, but well, you want to get out there. Well, it's definitely uh, a fear because you know it's tough going into certain environments where you know these are dangerous environments. Yes, uh, let, let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> you know, certain certain places that God sent me. You know, some, some church folks they they went there though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but to me, I'm I'm comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> I'm saying so. So I do understand the fear, but but you're exactly right. If, if nobody go there, yeah, who's gonna reach them? Who's gonna save? Them? So I definitely, definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Bible, you know, studier. And uh, there's a guy Philip in Acts chapter eight, and Philip, man, he goes to this town. And turns the whole town upside down, man. They encounter Philip and they're like, whoa. They said that he left the whole town in joy. One guy willing to go out there. I feel like you that kind of guy. You, you'll you go to the 16th Street Mall. You'll go oh, wherever yeah. the people is at. You're going to go and you're not afraid to go and reach them, share the gospel, pray for them, ask God for miracles. You know, that's you, man. That's, that's, that's I, I, you. I'm a modern day Philip. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. But, but, but I kind of feel like you, you're that way too. Kind of, kind of break down what you, what you guys did uh, this weekend. Man, uh, the gas station outreach, man, is something that we do. Actually, we're doing it more and more. We started out once, then we did it again, and just recently we did another gas station takeover. And the, the amazing thing about it is that these people are going to get gas anyway. So we want to position ourselves, first of all, to be a blessing. Second of all, to have a chance to encounter somebody who won't walk through my church doors. They won't show up at the church, but they'll show up at that pump. Right. And and so they show up at that pump and it's like, hey, I just want to pray for you. Is there anything I can pray for, man? And we praying for people, Holy Spirit showing up, uh, drug uh, people with drug addictions. We praying over them, Holy Spirit hitting them, man. Tears coming out. They giving up their drugs and all kinds of stuff, man. Some people were asking God to show up. And when we were out there, they were like, I can't believe this. I can't believe that on the day I'm asking God, he shows up. He shows up. I mean, what's amazing about that is you went out there and, and a bunch of church folks was putting up at the pump. <laughs> it was some, it, but not it, all of them. <laughs> right, right, right. You, you, you had a mixture of the world. Yes. Putting up yes, at that pump. yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that was amazing and, and awesome with, uh, what you did that, uh, this weekend. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, you uh, I got to get you out there with us, man. Please, uh, do. <laughs> Please, do. I got to get you out there with us, man, yeah. because I know you would really, really, really enjoy that. Now, uh, you have a passion, and now uh, I, I want to hear a little bit about it, of putting together dramas and plays and things like that. Yes. You know, talk to me about that, and how does it tie in with your evangelism? So, uh, growing up uh, doing music, I also grew up uh, with the gift of acting. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and I want to thank God for all of the gifts that he's blessed me with. Uh, And I I definitely want to stay humble. But God has blessed me with a a lot of uh, natural gifts. Amen. Uh, So, uh, at the age of 12, uh, I've been to acting school, uh, acting conservation, and 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 I've been in that school from 12 all the way to 18, mm. just being being trained year after year as an actor. And um, 
And what, what God did was he was positioning me uh, for ministry. Yeah. So um, going to my church, Colorado Christian Fellowship at the time, I wanted to just be an actor. I just wanted to be, be in their plays. And then uh, one of the uh, guys who was running the plays, he moved. So there was a spot that was open, <laughs> and God was just nudging on my on my heart to, to, to uh, ask them, can I be head of the drama department? Now, I wasn't really writing plays at the time. Mm-hmm. I was just, you know, I wanted to be front center. I wanted right. to be the actor. I want to act. <laughs> and I remember, and, and I, I remember the first play they put me in. I had about three lines, and I was mad. <laughs> I was mad, Pastor. They, look, I, I've been to school for 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 ten years, and y'all gonna give me three lines? <laughs> Saying I wanted the lead role, and I remember I heard God clearly. He said, "If you be faithful with the little, mm. that's it. If you be faithful with the little, yes, I'm gonna bless you with the rest." So my flesh was like, you know what? They don't see my gifts. They don't see my talents. I'm quitting. Forget it. But no, I, I, I listened to God. I listened to the Holy Spirit. I did the play. The next play, I got a little bit more lines. Play after that, now I got the leading role. Mm. And then uh, once the acting director uh, went out of town, Mom Syria came up to me, which is uh, she's over the prophetic arts as a whole, mm-hmm. um, and asked me if I wanted to be you know, head of the drama department. Wow. And and from that day forth, I wrote about 10 plays for the church. Man, it's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yes. Now, now, these plays bring in people who probably wouldn't come to hear a sermon, but they'll come to check out the play, you know. And right. Yeah. And so for from the evangelistic standpoint, that's just another extension of what God was already doing in you, right? Excuse me. <laughs> exactly. Because when I go to my friends, hey, I don't say, hey, you guys want to come to church with me? <laughs> hey, you want to come see my play? Right. <laughs> and they all get excited because everybody loves plays. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when they come to the play, um, it is so impactful. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, there are uh, some friends of mine who actually got married during one of my uh, series. I, I did a series called Missing the Main Ingredients, which, yeah. w- which was about marriages. And I had about two, three marriages that took place. Actually, uh, my friend uh, Michael White and uh, Tika White. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah. They, they met wow. in my play. Wow. Wow. See, see T- Tika... She ministered uh, uh, with me uh, from the very beginning. So she she was one of my core actresses. And Mike came on later on. I had an actor that um, wouldn't be able to finish the play and fell out. And then I was introduced to Mike. And then Mike and Tika met. <laughs> and at the end of that play, they were talking about marriage. Wow. And I believe they they've been married now for uh, three years now. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's just right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this oh, stuff no. up. That's a oh, God no. thing. That's a that's a God thing. You know. T- tell me about uh, you know. I want to uh, bring Latrice you know into this. How powerful is it to have a wife who has the same passion and same desire? Right for evangelism as you do because it would be tough if she didn't right if she was like you know what you going out there for but she got the same kind of passion how powerful is that for you as a man of god well you know you know it's so funny uh latrice actually got ordained as a prophet Mm -hmm. but she took the uh, her position to be so so supportive of me she just jumped in the water Mm. (laughs) <laughs> like 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 she like like uh, uh, I brought her to CCF when uh, when we met, we became best friends. We was best friends for like a whole year before we was even dating. 
So, so she always say that I was, uh, cause she was in a backsliding state mm. and she, she always say that, you know, when she met me and I, and, 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 um, I start bringing her back to church and, and she started getting closer to God, God started to, you know, work on her, change her. And, and she became a whole different person. Man. And then God started to heal me and things I need to be healed. And then, um, I just knew uh, that was once I got my healing, I knew that was my wife. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And what's funny is she was ministering with me before she was with my wife. Amen. Amen. She, she She's the leading actress in all of my plays. Every show we do, she's right there on stage. Because uh, cause normally she sings and she sings all, all the choruses and hooks. I do all the rapping. So she's right there on stage with me. And, and she, she just throw herself right in the fire to support me, even though her, her prophetic gift is, is, is being a prophet. Yeah, yeah. And see, and that's beautiful because that's, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, and the two shall become one. God joining you together for that one purpose. And the purpose is to preach the gospel. The purpose is to reach people, whether it's through her prophetic gifting or singing or rapping or writing plays or, you know, it's to reach people and to reach people right where they are, to reach people in the place that they are. And so I just I just love what y'all are doing, man. I love, you know, the, the energy that y'all have as a couple, because so often, you know, you have these couples where, you know, one person is on fire for God and the other person's not. Right. And right. it's a struggle, you know, but it's a blessing when, man, she got as much fire as you do. Sometimes she got more fire than you. do. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And she used to be shy. Like uh, she wouldn't pray in front of people. Now she's a praying warrior. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so God is really, 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 really doing great things in our life. And, and she, she's walking more and more into her calling. And, and so, all right, so now let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, give, me, give, me some, give me some evangelistic tales, man. Some tales from the hood, man, where you, 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 you reaching out to people. Give me, some, give me some stories, man, of, you know, some, some things happening. <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you uh, how God transitioned me because uh, – I, I started off doing music for the world. Yeah. I was just a regular hip hop artist. Yeah. Yeah. And there was three opportunities that I had to get a record deal. And I'm like, what? 20, 21, 22. And, and, and I'm going, I'm going hard in the paint. Uh, you know, growing up in California, I'm known all around the city. Uh, I'm dropping, uh, albums, dropping mixtapes. Um, Battle rapping, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing it all. I'm, I'm trying to get signed, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. I wanted to be rich and famous. <laughs> Just like everybody else. Everybody else, right. You know what I'm saying? So one opportunity I had, that door shut. Second opportunity that I had to get a record deal, that door shut. Third opportunity I had, that door shut. Man. At this point, I'm like, what is going on? God, like, like you... You bless me with this gift. I see other people. Right. They got record deals. They got record deals. They, they, they on TV. They they acting. They, they, they're movie stars. They not as good as me. <laughs> but I'm over here struggling. And, 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 and they don't even love you like I love you. Mm. They don't go to church. Keep it real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so I'm, 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 I'm very frustrated at this point. And then I heard God clearly. God said, your position is not for the world, but it's to do my will. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That same gift that I gave you, I need you to do it for my will and for my purpose. Yes. Because I thought as you get closer to God, everybody had to be a pastor. I thought I was going to have to give up acting. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to give up music, so I fought God for two years. Mm, mm, mm. I fought him for two, and, and I tried to be slick. You know what I'm saying? I throw a little gospel song in there here and there, <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> saying, 
God said no. No. He said it's not about reaching millions and millions of people. It's all about reaching that one. That one. Wow. That one. And then I finally decided to make that transition from wanting to be rich and famous and get a record deal to now ministry. If I could just reach one person with my music, I'm successful in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. So so that was a, a big transition for me because I was afraid to, to take that leap, Pastor. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was very afraid to take the lead because in my mind, I'm like, don't nobody want to hear this type of music that I'm trying to put out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't want to hear this. You know what I'm saying? So so it's it's not it's not even about that anymore. Now, I don't care about no record deal. <laughs> I don't care about having a whole bunch of fans anymore. Now I, I do my plays and I do my music for the one now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, powerful testimony. Yeah, man, it definitely is powerful because, like you said, in a world where everybody's trying to be famous, everybody's trying to be rich, everybody's trying to be known, you know, that person that says, well, I don't even want that. I just want to see somebody go to heaven. I just want to see somebody's soul saved. I want to see a life changed, you know, from living for the world like I was to living for God like I am now. You know, that's the, the, the goal of every Christian, you know, and like like you were saying, when we go out and we do our gas station takeovers or we'll take over a laundry mat and minister to people. Uh, we don't we we're not out there to be famous. We're out there to win a soul. We're out there to to minister to somebody uh, that will never that, that will never never have walked through my church doors on a Sunday. So I'm going to show up at your door. <laughs> you, exactly, you know, exactly. I'm going to show up at your door. You know, Jesus sent them out two by two, right? He sent the 70 out two by two to go knock on doors. Right. And, and how do we get the church back to that belief that it's not one or the other? You know, we were talking about this I, I, before I think, we got on uh, air. It starts with, uh, preparation. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of churches is not preparing the saints. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I like about you, uh, Apostle Phil and, 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 and other pastors is they're preparing the saints for their purpose. Yeah. They're training them. That's what fivefold ministry is all about is training and equipping the saints. So the saints could go out in the world mm. and they're properly trained to, to do what they are supposed to do. Beautiful. But but they're not trained. You know what I'm saying? They, they come to church, participate, praise and worship, listen to the sermon, and they and they go home. And they go home. And they, they don't know what their calling is. They don't know what their purpose is. And I think if we put ourselves in a better position to teach and equip those who, who don't know what to do. Because sometimes it's, some some people just don't want to do anything. Some of them, you know, they just want to, you know, watch from right. the sidelines. You're right. right. They spectators. Some, some folks, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. You know what I'm saying? So I think properly uh, preparing the saints and equipping them to go out there and do ministry, uh, that that would be a good start. Yeah, and, and I agree with you because I believe it's you got to build this mindset that we're not saved just to be saved because if being saved was it then you he would you would die and go to heaven after you accept christ like all right i accepted christ what am i still here for (laughs) Why, why are we still here going through what we're going through it's because there's a mission there's a purpose there, there, there are people that are lost that need to be found in Christ. Uh, the, the Bible says that God is not willing for anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Why don't more believers have that in their heart? Why are we why are we so content with I got my sermon, I got my prayer, my prophecy. Now I'm going to go home. I'm not going to share this with nobody else. Why? You know, and you said one of the reasons is they're not prepared. I think the other reason is that that's kind of church culture. We kind of yeah. you know, train people to do that. We're supposed to be training yeah. them to go out, and we kind of trained them to sit and you know spectate. Yeah. You know, we got to get or, them off or, the bench. Or we, we we train them 
to be afraid of, 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 of the world, be afraid of sinners. There you go. You know, you know, I, 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 one thing that I, I really, really get that really gets me frustrated is dealing with certain church folks <laughs> who, who, who holier than thou. <laughs> <laughs> holier than thou you know what i'm saying and you know the world is just just icky to them mm. you know what i'm saying They're, you know people people uh who, who who's not as perfect who make mistakes who who trying to still struggling you know they found their face about them. yeah yeah and, and 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 that church hurt is kind of what stops people from going to church yeah so, yeah. so, so the people who, you know, they they they, they want to get out there and, and they want to minister, they deal with church hurt. Now, now they don't want to go to church anymore. Right. So I think I think if we could, uh, I think if people could get healed from that church hurt and realize that church is just full of hurt people, and sometimes <laughs> hurt people hurt people hurt people. <laughs> right, 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 right. But you know, the world has this mentality that because we're saved and because we're Christians, we're supposed to be perfect. We can't make mistakes. Yeah. Don't put me up on no pedestal. Please. <laughs> please, please don't do that to me. You know, I tell I tell our congregation, I didn't I didn't come in here on no white cloud. The angels, right, right, right. the angels didn't drop me off at the front door. I walked in here just like everybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. I right. go through. I have good days. I have bad days. I've got temptation. I got to pray. I got to fast, you know, just like everybody else, you know, and, 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 and I want to throw this at you, you know, me being the type of person I am, you know, I'll, I'll take the congregation out with me to Colfax. We'll hand out sandwiches. We'll walk up and down Kofax and pray for people. We'll take over a gas station. We'll take over a laundromat. We're actually coming up with a, a trying to come up with a way to take over um, um, uh, a car wash. You know, get out there and wash some cars and pray for some people. You know, we we just just trying to find ways to get out to the people. What if more pastors were like that? Especially the pastors in the big churches. What if that pastor in that big church? Was out there on Colfax praying for people. I think people will see uh, what what, what uh, the church is all about, which is love. I think uh, people have this conception that God is just just a wrathful God. That that you know, as soon as you do something bad, He's ready to strike you down. No, no, God is love. Yeah, and we're His representatives, so they won't know. What that agape love look like? Right. Unless come it come to us. Come on, man. So, 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 if, if more pastors is out there in the streets and sh- showing people love, they more receptible to to, to accept Christ. They yeah. they more more receptible to to come back to church because of love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying instead of you know you know back in the day, uh, the way we used to minister is you know. If you don't stop, you're going to hell. That's the way we used to do it. Come on, man. <laughs> and, and, and we got we got we got to be up on the times, Sam. And I think uh, tradition is, is, is part of that problem. Uh, you know, some churches are still traditional. Yeah. Uh, and I and I think if we be a little bit more uh, creative, like you are, you know what I'm saying you, you're very creative. You you coming up with different ways. On how to reach people. Yeah, I think if more churches do that, and, and, and they see that love, we will save more people. And you know, one of the things that was said to me is they love the fact that we were giving and not asking. So often, the church has a black eye because we're, we're constantly taking offerings and we're constantly, you know, this and that. But, exactly. but 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 how come it's not coming back out into the community? How come we're not pouring back out into the members and you know uh, finding ways to actually okay yeah tithe give but we're gonna take that tithe we're gonna take that giving and we're gonna go and make an impact you know in our communities we want to wake people up and let them know that the church is not take 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 but the church is all about giving back you know to the community. Jesus said how you treat the least of these. Is how you treat me. And so we we have to be the kind of people that, you know, mobilize ministers to get out 
you know, and touch people and, and bless people. And, and, and I think uh, that's what I like about you is that, again, you're not afraid to, you know, whether it's grocery store, whether it's 16th Street, whether it's, you know, five points, you know, it ain't five points no more. But, you know, I mean, wherever it is, you're willing to get out there and just minister uh, to the lost to the to the backslidden to the church hurt we need more people that will just like and i like what you said you know about the album the black sheep you know other other i mean the record label black sheep because that's how people feel mm-hmm. a lot of people feel like i'm 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 the outcast you know who's reaching those people who's going after them and saying no you don't have to be perfect you don't have to say everything right look right or every just come on in let god work on your heart and you hang around long enough until Jesus changed you. <laughs> and, I, and I like how you, you, you mentioned giving because giving is a powerful tool for us to, to express that, that love. I, I was, I was uh, talking about that. Yeah, God, yeah. love. Saying we, we know that uh, we, money is not our source. Mo- right. We use money as a resource. There, you it, know is. What I'm there it is. Now, now, now the Bible, people have this misunderstanding that they think uh, money is evil. The Bible said the love of money is right, evil. Right, right. So, so if you do anything to get money, you're willing to kill still uh, to get money. Right. Then, then that that root could produce uh, evilness in, in your heart. But if you understand uh, uh, the, uh, a righteous relationship that you have with money, and you could use it as a resource to to help others, right? Your your source, who is God. Is going to make sure you're taken care of. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? He's going to continue to provide for you. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, I, I kind of blame, you know, this whole prosperity yeah. gospel, <laughs> gospel they're doing right now, where they're telling people, if you give this much money, God will bless you. Yeah. No, no, yeah. We, 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 don't, we don't give to get anything from God. We, we give because we're thankful for what God already does. There for you us. go, man. And, 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 and in return, God just blesses us double. That just comes with the territory. <laughs> but but, but I, I think the heart, it, it starts with the heart. And um, in, in the world, they, they hear this stuff. And, and now they think all oh, the church wants is, is their money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have some horror stories. You know, I had a friend tell me a story. He was at a church one time and, you know, um, you know, they, they, they took an offering and he put his last six dollars in the, in the offering and and you know he had went to the church and uh, afterwards and asked for prayer asked for something and they said well you know come back on monday and set an appointment and the brother was mad he was like wait a minute i gave my last six dollars that i could have been using for something else because you know you said god was gonna bless me and then when i reach out to somebody you could say go you say go schedule an appointment that's crazy. <laughs> is that crazy or what? Crazy. What kind of stuff That's is crazy. that? What? What? And I was like, man, what church was that? I need to go up there and protest because yeah, somebody crazy. had to have time for this brother. Somebody had to have a, a you know a minute to talk to talk with him and hear his story. And I think, like you said, that love thing means I'll stop and listen to somebody's story. I'll stop and hear their heart from where they at. And maybe I can do something. Maybe I can direct them to where something can be done, but I'm not going to, Hey man, set an appointment, uh, come back in two days or uh, what kind of stuff is that? You know, the church has got to do better. Sometimes all they need is prayer. If if you encourage them and pray for them, that gives them motivation to to go another day. That's it. That's it. You you, you might not always have it to give, but, but but praying is, is a form of giving. Come on now. At least if you got time to ask for money, at least give them time to pray for them. Come on, man. <laughs> you you know, and, and you know how true that is? I'll, I'll give you two in- instances. There was a time I was pulling up to a 7-Eleven, and I was going inside, and there was a guy standing outside, and he was asking for change. You know, and he's asking for change, and I say to him, well, well hey, man, I, I could give you some change, but can I pray for you? And, and, the, and the brother says, well, you, yeah, man, I need some prayer. And there was another guy standing over uh, close to him. He said, man, are y'all getting ready to pray? I said, yeah, come on over. We, we, I'll pray for you, too. There was another, <laughs> there was another guy. He, he was at the phone booth down a ways. He's like, hey, are y'all getting ready to pray? I said, yeah. Another lady walks up. She says, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. 
by, by the time I looked up, it was five people standing here in, in this group. And so we locked hands and I prayed and the Holy Spirit began to give words of prophecy, wisdom and knowledge. I'm praying for stuff. Man, there was one lady I'm telling you because I'm praying and, I, you know, I'm looking around the circle. This one lady, I started praying for her and it looked like it was looked like bullets was hitting her. She was like, oh, oh, oh. Ooh. It's like, man, the Holy Spirit is hitting her. Every time I would say something, she would go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> man, when I got done, the guy who asked me for change didn't even need change no more. Oh, wow. He hugged me. He walked away. I was like, wow. man, you, I was like, uh, you still want a couple of dollars? He said, he said, no, man, I'm good. I got what I needed. Wow. And that's how true what you're saying is. If we just take the time to minister to them, you know, and I'll give you one more. My good friend, Chalmer Williams, um, he's got a podcast called Fatherhood Fridays. Me and him were out in our neighborhood. He's moved to Austin, Texas, but he, me and him, he was one of my um, assistant pastors. We're out I know in Chalmer. The, yeah, you know Chalmer? All right, <laughs> good. He's one of my instructors. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, he did the, uh, uh, what was it, the leadership class, the, uh, what is it, online, the, the, the leadership class online. But Chalmer, me and Chalmer, we're out in the neighborhood and we're praying for people and we come across this couple and it's noon and they already got drinks in the hand. <laughs> they already got drinks in the hand. We like, man, hey, man, we're just out praying for people. They're like, well, man, we definitely need some prayer and man, we need some groceries, man. Ain't nothing in the refrigerator. You know, all we got is this. And she had a bottle. And he had a cup with the red, you know, those red cups. <laughs> Everybody know what's in the red cup. <laughs> He's out there with the red cup. And so me and Chalmer, we lock up with them and we take turns praying for them. And we pray for them. And man, I tell you, I kid you not, the power of God hit that couple, man. They put their alcohol down. And walked away from it. Walked wow. away from it. Just left it. Walked away from it. We took them. To, we took them over to the grocery store. Uh, bought them. You know. Bought them some groceries. Sent them back home with some groceries. But they left that alcohol there on the curb. I'm wow. telling you, what you're saying is true. Sometimes wow. that's all it takes is for the people of God to just step out and say, God, you want to reach folks, and you're going to use my hands, my feet. My mouth, you know, my hugs to reach out to people. You know, we got to do that more. We got to do that more. And, and, and it's about planting seeds because everybody that we, we minister to, they it might not catch right away. Right. Some you know plant, some like, water. <laughs> like, because uh, there have been times where, you know, I, I have gave to, uh, to somebody and, 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 and asked to pray for them and and initially, it seemed like they just doing it so they could get what they want. Right, right. But but it's not my job. This is what I realized. It's not my job to make that seed grow. Right. My my job is just to plant the seed. Amen. So Amen. because that that kind of it kind of it didn't stop me from giving, but it made me real leery. Like like I, <laughs> I started asking people, you know what. what what you gonna get with it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, God said you don't gotta do all that. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah. You, you do you you be obedient. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like if God tell you uh uh to store seed or pay your tithes, it's not your job to worry about what that pastor do with that. Right. You just do what God tells you to do. That's it. And God will take care of you. you know what I'm saying God will deal with them. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, yes he so, will. Yeah, so 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 it, it makes me more free to give. Uh, with with that attitude, just you know, all I'm doing is just planting seeds. Sometimes that seeds will take root right away. Sometimes it might take a little time. Amen, amen. Well, man, I, well, I'm gonna have you pray for the listeners and just pray for people to get saved, man. You know, yes, sir. Uh, that's the way I want to wrap up this this episode is with the man of God praying for salvation and praying for ministers to be mobilized to go reach those that uh, that nobody's going to reach, you know, that there be more people like you that want to go out there and reach people. Yes, sir. Amen. Father God, come to you right now, Father. Father, first of all, Father, I thank you for Apostle Anthony, Father. I thank you for the calling that you have given him. 
I thank you for the mission you have given him. I thank you for, for his podcast. I thank you for his classes. Father, I pray that you would continue to do a great work in his life, Father. Continue to do powerful things in his life. Open up even more doors in his life, Father. And as far as the listeners, Father, I pray that someone hears this uh, podcast, you, Father, and decide to give their life to Christ, Father. I, pr- I pray that these seeds get planted, Father, what we're talking about, Father, this love we're talking about. I pray that someone asks, what is this love that they're talking about? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and they reach out to try to experience this agape love that only you could give, Father. I pray that... All the listeners, Father, that 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 their ears are, are open, Father. I pray that that their eyes are open, Father. I pray that they may see, Father. I pray that they may hear, Father. I pray for the churches, Father. I pray that the churches send more evangelists out to the streets, Father, to reach those who who, who won't come to the church, to to go out there with, with no fear, Father. Father, you did not give us a spirit of fear. You gave us a spirit of love, peace, and a sound mind, Father. So, so any fear, Father, I pray that, that you bind it from, from the churches right now in the powerful name of Jesus, Father. Mm-hmm. Release your people out there to the streets. Release your people out there to the gangbangers. Release your people out there to the people in jail. Release your people out there to the drug dealers. Release your people, Father. Take away all fear, Father, mm-hmm. so we can continue to evangelize to the whole world. Know Christ. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Man, I know we we could just keep talking forever. <laughs> but man, <laughs> I, I, I man, I, I really appreciate you, man. I love you, brother. You, you and your wife and your family, and I love your ministry. We're gonna do some more stuff together. Uh we talked about that when you got ordained. Yes. Like, man, we gotta hook up and do some stuff. Uh so this is just one thing that we're doing. We're gonna do something else together. Um again, uh tell them about your your new single and uh where they can get it, how they can get it. I'm gonna drop the link. Um, okay. in, in the description, but just tell them about the new single, where they can get it, how they can get it. So, so you can find my music on all uh, mm-hmm. uh, music media outlets. Uh, uh, the way I spell my name is Showcase. That's S H O C A C E. You can find me on 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 Facebook, uh, uh, Rolling Graham, or you type in Showcase. You can find me on uh, IG or all, all social medias and and all music outlets iTunes, Spotify, on and on and on on YouTube. Just type in Showcase, S-H-O-C-A-C-E. Nice, nice. Well, man, this has been a blessing uh, fellowshipping with you, man. And I I just I know that some people are going to be blessed and inspired from this. And so for my listeners, remember to love the God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm.